Oh boy. Wonderful. Just wonderful. That That's a great way to start it. I wish we could go back and do it over. I had the uh, microphone muted. So uh, God bless all of you people for sticking around through that. I'm going to see if I can, uh, let me see. This isn't going to work. I had myself on here. I don't know. Awesome. Hold on. Technical difficulties, everybody. I still had some little bit of smooth jazz playing when I read. I listen to smooth jazz. I thought I was going to have it going, but I uh, I like to see myself in here. What did I do? Why am I frozen? Why am I frozen now? You gotta be kidding me. Am I frozen, all you guys? No, I'm live. This has just turned into a wonderful. <laughs> I don't know what is going on here. Okay. Like, well, this is one for the ages, huh, everybody? I'm gonna just jump right into it. Uh, I will look at Triple N for you, John. Um, sorry, I've. It's just been going haywire here. Maybe my brain is still on my kids having their homecoming. Hoko, as they call it. Man, I don't know if any of you have teenage daughters, but dropping them off and seeing what they were wearing kind of reminds me of these high schoolers. Looks like they're getting ready to go out for a bachelorette party on the Las Vegas Strip. Crazy, but I guess that's what the kids do nowadays, and Maybe it's just me being a dad and looking at my kids being like, where's the rest of your clothes? You're going out. Like you, you seem to be missing clothes there. So this episode here is brought to you by, I don't know, it's just not brought to you by anything. It's brought to you by the goodwill of the world, <laughs> um, the Costco brand, Kirkland Whiskey. So uh, good, good to go. Yes. Okay, everybody, let's start this over. Start fresh Uh, for those of you watching on the replay. So sorry about that. But somebody at the end of the last week's stream, I don't remember who it was. Was it you, Steve? I asked my thoughts about gold. And I literally just got done a couple months ago selling the last of our physical gold. We had some gold eagles. I used to have a ton, not a ton, but um, I don't remember the how many ounces we had, but we had had maybe about seven or eight hundred dollars in silver. That's physical, so silver bars, um, you know, the little ones, just coins, and uh, I'm not doubloon, bu- uh, bullion. <laughs> People are like you got doubloons? Where'd you get that? Uh, the only silver I did save is a silver Roman. I think it's a denarius, right? I'm bad in history. It's a Roman denarius, I believe. Pretty cool. It's from before uh, Jesus de Cristo was born, uh, Jesus Christ. So it's from the 100s BC. I think that's cool. It's like owning a little bit of history. And I I think that's that is neat. But the rest of it, I'm going to pop up on the screen for you right here and show you people why. Really quickly, we'll make this really, really fast. And oh, dude, yeah. Skynet hacked it. Yeah. No, that was my fault. I had it on mute, but uh. all right, here we go. So these are the reasons why. Now let's go back to that. These are the reasons why I um I sold gold and what I wish I knew. There we go. You guys can read that. So I'm gonna go through these rapid fire. I'd love to know your thoughts. First of all, first off, we can do it, right? We can talk. Come on, mouth, work with me. It's unproductive and lifeless. As I've said before, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't produce anything. Uh, One ounce of gold is always going to be an ounce of gold. It's not going to fart out little bits of gold dust that you can scoop up and melt down and eventually pour into more little, you know, ounces of gold or tenths of ounce of gold or whatever and sell it. No, it's always itself. And the only way you're going to make money on that, the physical gold, you know, if you loan it out to somebody, but that's crazy. I don't know who's doing that, but just holding on to the physical gold yourself, it's lifeless. It doesn't do anything. It will always be that same amount of gold a million years into the future. 
you know, if the sun hasn't turned into a red giant and enveloped all of us by then, uh, it's always going to be tied also to strict supply and demand, meaning that now I, I tied it in below because this is one that I had to think about because I always thought, yeah, but aren't stocks tied into supply and demand because it's an auction? And yes, it is, but that's the stock price. But because businesses and the stock market as a whole can reinvent itself, it can innovate, it can do things to shape the economy, shape the future of our lives, earn more money, be more productive. Same thing with, with real estate. Real estate can do that. Really anything that produces income, you can do that. So uh, just read through your guys' comments there. So that's the thing. These are pretty much my thoughts with why I sold it. And then I love that um, the apocalypse, and this is very, very abbreviated. I wanted to keep this very short because, uh, but it's still an interesting discussion because I was somebody that sold 401k funds. I took a 10% penalty. It's the stupidest thing, but uh, Dr. Doom, if anybody, I'll, I'll say his name, if anybody knows Dr. Doom, uh, convinced me, not personally, somewhere around, uh, I think it was 2014, 2013, coming out of the great financial collapse uh, or crisis, whatever you want to call it. And I sold retirement funds, probably about $10,000 worth to buy precious metals because, as they said, when the stock market collapsed, then you were going to wish you had gold. You were going to lose everything. And what are you going to feed your family with? Stocks that are worthless or gold? precious metals. So I bought the precious metals and it was not good. Gold went down, down, down. The stock market went up, up, up. And it just was the most awful feeling. So I finally sold the gold. I got, it was right around $1,700. At one point it was around a thousand bucks. We paid about 1700 for those ounces of gold and all the other precious metal we bought. Uh, it was, it was no boy. <laughs> No bueno. So that's when I learned my lesson. And the last thing is that apocalypse test is if the world ended, zombie apocalypse, you know, and you had gold, what would be more useful, gold or guns? If the world looked like it wasn't going to come back, what are you going to do with the gold? It might look pretty. You know, we might say like, hey, people valued that once, but guns are going to have way more utility for protection and for, um, and for, you know, well, self-defense and for potentially killing your food, you know, uh, doing it, doing it that style. Unless maybe, you know, you got a few major league pitchers and they can throw the gold bars hard enough and, you know, protect themselves that way. But yeah, fast study, dude, guns and chicken. Exactly. So, and then the last thing I want to show you guys is this chart from, well, let me get it up here. <laughs> let me get it up here. This one right yeah. Hold on. Here we go, here we go. Here we go, everybody. Still don't have that traveling music. Check out this chart. And let me do this to make it a little bit bigger. Sorry that it's small, but eh, I don't want to zoom it in too much. This is from longtermtrends.com. And we're looking at the 10 year of gold, the Dow Jones. So up at the top in the red, I know this is hard to say. I'll just walk you through it. The S&P 500 is the red line. And I'm not even going to try and zoom in. So in the last 10 years, the S&P 500 has gone up 153%, 154%. Gold is at 43%. And we can go pretty far back 30 years. You just see gold is always underperforming the market. 900, I'm sorry, it's too small for me even. 872% gold, 440%. We'll even zoom it to 100 years. So we go back 100 years. The S&P 500 is up 54,600% roughly, while gold is up 9,200%, which is still nice, but it's basically just pacing inflation and silver is a lot less way down there at the bottom. And this is, I didn't put the link on the description, but the other chart that's 
more striking is the total return index. Uh, when we look 100 years out, I'm just going to read this. The total return index of the market last 100 years is up almost 2 million percent, where gold is up 9,300. So we'll just say 10,000 percent. It can't compete. It can't compete. And for long-term investors, I think these charts say it all. I'm going to stop sharing that just because it's so small. But uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to know what you guys think. Do you guys, what did this, um, what's his name? I wrote it down because I want to see. Mr. Rob Berger, Berger, <laughs> Mr. Rob Berger, what did he say about gold and how to invest? I'd love to know. Um, I know this, you know, I like doing these for the community because this is obviously not a, you know, 10 cheap stocks to buy now or, you know, we could uh, do one like, you're a complete idiot if you don't buy these stocks, they're so cheap. But I do think this is interesting. And I think it was you, Steve, that brought this. Uh, <laughs> Dude, Chris, that's brilliant, buddy. Yeah, take the guns and then you can take people's gold with the guns. Yeah. Um, Dude, that's brilliant. So I'd love to know what you guys think. And I, I debated on not doing this, but you know what? I, I remember saying at the end of the last episode that I was going to do it. And, you know, we talked gold, even though I don't think I said that. But, well, yeah, it wasn't. Steve, I think it's only taxed if you sell it, right? A collectible. I Well, yeah, I don't know how they would do that. I don't know how they would. Uh, tax it. I know that politicians have talked about a wealth tax. I don't know how you're going to tax people's wealth because uh, net worth is in that. But if it's an unrealized gain, if we're starting to tax unrealized gains, I think things are going to get pretty, pretty ugly. So I think it is selling. But do you know what, man, when I sold my gold at the coin shop, it just was a receipt. I, he paid me, I brought in the gold, Dude paid me in cash, gave me a receipt, and I think it's up to me, you know. Of course, now if we got the CIA, but this is all hypothetical gold that I've sold. And, yeah, that's – that's, dude, what are you doing? You spent your money at – oh, Jaguars. Hey, I'll drink to that. That's uh, Rick, right, ticker R-I-C-K, RCI Hospitality Holdings, yeah, which their CEO, if you get the newsletter – he was on Motley Fool Money earlier this week, maybe like Wednesday or Tuesday. Very interesting uh, stock. Do any of you guys own RCI outright? Let us know in the comments below. Nibble, I didn't see what you guys nibbled on. What did you nibble on? Hey, Trevon, what's up, man? Thanks for checking on back in. The REIT's getting hit hard because interest rates won't go down until 2025. Maybe we don't know when the interest rates are going to go down. Uh, it could be higher for longer. Obviously, the market is spooked. Yeah, the REITs are getting crushed because why a lot of them are function with debt. They have a lot of debt, most of them do, and the rates are going to trickle in. So it's, it's safe to say the market is worried, and I think the stronger REITs are going to survive. So, you know, this is something we got to keep our eye on, and it's why... Realty income was in the $40 this week. That's pretty crazy. I think it dipped into the 40s for a day or two during the COVID crash. But I, I bought one more share at uh, $49. And yeah, you guys see, I just, I had a momentary lapse. I thought like, oh no, did I forget to share my stock buys in the newsletter? But no, I, I, I did that. I put it in there. So uh, yeah, it's, it's good. You don't want to spend all your money at Jaguars. You can support those fine young women, but just don't spend it all. Have that rich life money, as Ramit said. He says, if that's your rich life, baby, do it. If that's what makes you happy, everybody's a consenting adult. Have at it, you know. I will say, though, it did sound, it did feel a little icky because uh, on the I listened to the RCI earnings call from August and their CEO had said that earnings are a little bit flat in the summer, A, because the heat, especially in Austin, they couldn't have the patio open, and B, because uh, families are taking vacations, there's a lot of trips to Europe, a lot of flights out of the country, 
and a lot of the whales, as he called the people that drop five, ten thousand dollars on a night in the club, uh, as opposed to like the younger gents that spend maybe a hundred bucks. Um, he said they're they'll come back, so in the fall things will probably pick up, and it just felt icky thinking like so you got these whales are on family vacations but they're going to come back into the clubs and drop five ten grand on what goes on inside those clubs and it just you know didn't feel right oh pat you almost did uh almost did realty and come on the other one which is the other one what the other one i talk about Added to CVS and W. I mean, you're talking about Vici, maybe. You know, that makes me worried. Walgreens, uh, I'd like to know your guys' opinion, but Walgreens has me worried. As far as I know, and if this changed, I missed it, but they still don't have a CEO or a CFO. And I think the CFO departed in July. So they're without people at the top. CEO and CFO are usually the two intertwined, like, always on the earnings call with like PepsiCo, you always have the CEO and the CFO. So I don't know what's going on with Walgreens. They're in a state of transition and the market is not, not happy with what they're doing. And I can't blame it right now. So I would not be surprised if they cut that dividend uh, riskier, I think, than CVS. But CVS, right, has their issues too because in California, Blue Cross pulled out of a bunch of the CVSs from whatever that capacity, I don't remember exactly, and went with, I think it was the Amazon. Um, sorry, I don't have the details on that. But either way, it was a negative, uh, it was negative to CVS. So they both are a little bit risky right now. I, I would not be very, uh, very comfortable with that. Pat, you got Walgreens and Realty Income, 23 more Realty Income tomorrow. What do you ever do you buy when the market's open? I know Manish Pabrai says that he doesn't like to buy when the market is open. He only buys and sells when the market is closed because he's trying to reduce the amount of emotion in there. And for me, that's probably a good idea. Maybe something I should take up because there's times that when the market's, you know, you're looking at the tickers up, down, up, down, 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 whatever. I'll buy and then it'll drop more and I'll be like, oh, I should have waited like 30 minutes. I could have got a better price. So yeah, Manish Pabrai is one of those investors that only invests when the market is closed or I should say does his buying and selling uh, because he doesn't want to, you know, deal with the emotion of it. So interesting now. So yeah, let me, let me know what else you guys, dude, you don't like gold and you buy dividends. You know, I would say if you, had to have exposure to gold. You know, the gold miners move up and down usually with the price of gold. They do pay a dividend. And yeah, you like I said, there's no gold dust dividend. I watched it, believe me. You know, had the family sit around watching the little uh, gold bullion and it did not, I got to say, spit out or fart out little gold dust that we could, you know, scoop up with like a little a little broom or something and, and melt it down. So nice. No commodities or precious metal. Fast Eddie, by the way, man, you're looking well. I don't, obviously I can't see any of you, but I can pretend, right? We could do pretend time. Uh, Rob Berger's a YouTuber and attorney investor. That's interesting. I <laughs> Watching once in a rare years is more fun. You know, I'd like to be fun um, trying to, not be too fun because that can be a turnoff. I want to keep it light, always trying to, because I like to think of myself as a beginner. So I want to keep it more focused towards easier to understand, right? There's that saying that there's in anything you do, there's always going to be more beginners than there are experts or advanced uh, personnel because anybody who doesn't do what you're doing is a beginner, whether they know it or not. So your grandma, your grandpa, your peepaw, your mima, they are all beginner dividend investors. They just don't know it yet, right? So we always want to do that. Okay, news time. John, you want to know a little bit about a uh, little bit about Triple N. So everybody, let's whisk away to the land of simply safe 
dividends and I'm pretty close to being caught up. So John, this one's John, this is a shout out for you for that special lady in your life, right? Doing like Casey Kasem. Uh, oh, I got to hide your comment because you're going to block some of the stuff. Sorry about this, people. Technical difficulties. Stand by. All right, let's try that again with a southern voice. People tuned in like, why is this guy talking like a like a cheap Elvis here? Say, man, you ain't you ain't no Elvis. This is awful. We're tuning out. Okay, here we go. This I can confidently make bigger, but not too big. So Triple N, I wrote a few notes down, everybody. Hi. They were founded in uh, 1984. They follow that sale leaseback model where they will buy real estate from a business and then lease it out to them. So the business gets cash, Triple N gets the land, and then they lock them into like a long-term agreement. They have uh, the, tr well, triple net lease, if you don't know, it means the tenants pay for insurance. They pay for maintenance, utilities, property taxes. They have over 3,000 properties and none are more than 5% of rent. 60% of those are mostly experiential or service oriented tenants. They focus on uh, single tenants. So they have uh, a lot of retail property, which could be a bad thing if we hit that recession, but there's no strip malls. There are no malls, no shopping malls that they have. And they have a focus on tenants that have strong rent coverage and they have raised the dividend every year since 1990. But as you'll see, uh, this could be a good one to, let me get down to it here, down to the nitty gritty. So there's the dividend growth, very slow, only 3% CAGR. And this is what you'll find with a lot of REITs. So in my opinion, because the growth is so slow, I think this is why it can be a really good time for those long term minded investors because if we're buying them when they're down low, then we're going to get the capital appreciation on those shares. Because honestly, look at this. If you're sitting around 20 years, a 3% CAGR, that's barely pacing inflation. And I think like the 30 or 40 or 60, whatever it is, uh, year inflation is somewhere just in the three and a quarter, three and a half percent range, something like that. So uh, we need that capital appreciation with the REITs. And it's a little bit hard because um, obviously they're diluting shareholders with the issuing REITs, but they're doing that because they have to pay out 90% of their right of their income as a dividend to the shareholders. So there's not left, not a lot left over to pay down debt and invest. So that's why they're doing a lot of issuing shares so they can expand the business and grow the business. Realty Income's done a lot of that. But uh, yeah, ex-dividend passed, they're paying $2.26 per share quarterly dividend. And the dividend yield is 35% above the five-year average. But always remember that this is just backward looking, tells us nothing about the future. So it's it can be a nice little benchmark. And of course, they've been as high as $48. They're currently at 34 right now. So just 35, they're at the very, very low end of the 52-week price range. And real quick metric, we'll look at the AFFO payout ratio is kind of like the uh, adjusted funds, not kind of like, it is the adjusted funds from operations, uh, kind of like looking at the payout ratio with what's left over after maintaining the properties and upkeep and keeping those properties, you know, nice. So the tenants don't leave. Uh, so currently 68%, not bad at all. And then what do we got here? The AFFO per share. So yeah, it's going up and to the right, but this is also what we like to see, you know, sales going up, but unfortunately the shares were at 120 million in 2013 and 180 million the last 12 months. So that is triple N. And I did want to show you guys one thing here. If you don't know, I, tell, tell me, do you invest in T-Mobile? Because check it out. T-Mobile is now a dividend stock, and I'm curious how this is going to affect the market, how they feel about them. <clears throat> Their very first dividend is going to be on uh, X dividend of November 30th, and they're going to pay that out December 15th. So T-Mobile, uh, $2.60 per share per year, and 
they don't have any of the free cash flow metrics. I didn't figure any of those out because I literally just came on it. <laughs> I just came across it uh, before I popped on here with all you guys. And yeah, they've been doing a little bit of diluting themselves, although they are buying back. But I think, did they not have an acquisition there in 2020? I don't know. I've never really looked that deeply into them. And you know what? I will get to your comments, but let me do the news so I don't forget a uh, little bit of news from Simply Safe Dividends. Again, there's over 4,200 dividend paying stocks and ETFs. And if we were to do news on all of them, it would be excruciating. So they uh, Simply Safe reaffirmed zoom a little more. Pfizer. Do you guys own Pfizer for almost 5% dividend yield? But obviously, with same thing with Walgreens, the demand for COVID shots and stuff like that is dropping. So that's probably going to hurt them. Um, American Electric Power raised their dividend 4.41%. I'm going to just speed through these. Go back, pause the video if you want. Pause it now, catch up. I don't know if you want to read these little blurbs. OGE, which is uh, Oklahoman Electric Utility, raised their dividend only 1%. That's their 17th straight year of growth. Uh, Next Era Energy Partners, they have revised their distribution growth outlook from a 12 to 15% range, I think, right? Let me see that blurb. Down to 5 to 8%, uh, citing the tighter monetary policy and higher interest rates. So there you go. The higher interest rates are working their way through the economy. Come on, you sum of gum. I know I hit the back button. Maybe I didn't. Of course I did. That's okay. Nobody fear. Everybody stay seated. <laughs> I'm going to get through this. Accenture. I don't own Accenture. Let me know if you do. Raise their dividend 15%. And they've raised that dividend double digit almost every year since 2006. Next Era Energy, which I think is the parent of Next Era Energy Partners, NEP, right? They were dividend downgraded to the lower end of the very safe bucket. And two more, Universal, this one we talked about on the podcast a little bit. Uh, they sell their tobacco leaves. That's how they make their money. And as that's dwindling and a kind of a melting ice cube, and as the world shifts to more heat, not burn, I don't know what tobacco leaves future looks like with that. So I would be worried, but, you know, I think Ian Lopik still owns them. And then lastly, Honeywell raised their dividend 4.9%. That's their 13th consecutive year of dividend growth. So there you go. There's your news from Simply Safe, and I can get caught up to you guys. So what do you want to know? Ask a question. Again, let me know what you people have been buying. Do you buy gold? Do you hold gold in your uh, in your little hand? Like Warren says, you can fondle it. You can hold it. And so somebody's got to make a meme for that with the uh, you know little coin farting out gold dust that you can collect. So you did buy triple N. That's where we left off, I think. Hey, what's up, Matt? Welcome back. Matt, everybody say hello, Matt. Hi, Matt. Thanks for coming back. He wouldn't expect lower rates. You know what? Yeah, we don't know, right? A lot of uh, people people think that they're just going to keep raising rates until something breaks really badly. And we thought we saw that with the banking you know, crisis. So I don't think it was a banking crisis. I think it was a few banks in crisis, if that makes sense. It wasn't the whole sector. It was just a couple of the individual banks and it, it didn't spread. But yes, I do agree with that, Burn Survivor. But I always add that caveat, right? That, hey, people were probably buying Lehman Brothers, you know, when everyone was fearful. They were buying Enron when everyone was fearful. So you're right, dude. That is very astute of you to say to do your homework because you have to. Yeah, we could talk about this. I'm, you know, maybe we can, uh, if you guys want to know, we can throw up WB on the, oh, you know, good points. Dude, you guys are making good points. Billy Walgreens could see bankruptcy, he thinks, in time. Uh, another, what's that? Rite Aid, right? Rite Aid used to be everywhere. But, yeah. That would be crazy. And we don't think Walgreens is going to go bankrupt because, dude, they've been just everywhere. Ever since I can remember, there's been Walgreens. 
that would be sad if they ever went bankrupt. How do we get that Walgreens smell? You guys know what I'm talking about? Walgreens, I've been to Walgreens in Florida, uh, Colorado, California, you know, Illinois, Wisconsin, everywhere I go, Virginia, that's been a Walgreens, they have the same smell. How do they do that? How do they get that same Walgreens smell? I don't know. Maybe that's what, uh, who wrote that song in the seventies? Ooh, that smell. You guys that are older know that. I know it's about weed, but Sweet that you're touching down on metals. Yeah, Casey, um, I'm not a big fan. I understand it, but I would just rather buy, put it this way, uh, you're not even diversified, right? I just thought of that. When you're holding just gold, when you buy that gold, you can't diversify inside of it. And I think I would much rather own just just the S&P 500. Just give Give me SPY over an ounce of gold any day of the week. It, it's just, you know, it's self-cleansing. Um, I did hear, though, that we need to pay attention that the market cap weighted ETFs like S&P, right, where you have the Magnificent Seven doing all of the heavy lifting, because when those, if and when, start to sell off, that's really going to pull that down. So where you have a market cap, weighted. It's not going to be as well on the downside as uh, equal cap weighted, meaning that there's no, uh, how do you, how do you want to say it? Preference, preference for weighting the big mamma jammas at the top. That's why you got Apple, Amazon, NVIDIA. So then when every, you know what, let's look at that real quick. I want to show you guys something because if you're not having any clue what I'm talking about. I can show you this much better. And if somebody knows, as I'm setting this up, if anybody knows a, um, what's the equal cap? Maybe someone can uh, set that up. What is an equal cap weighted S&P 500? I don't, I don't know the ticker, but I'm already looking at this. I got to bring you guys with. So check this out, all y'all. So here is the, make that even a little bit bigger. So this is the S&P 500, $427 a share. But yeah, expense ratio is only 0.09%. You're only paying $9 a year for every $1,000 invested? No, that's wrong. Why can't I think of that? So if it's 0.09, yeah, right? $9 for every 1000 bucks invested because SCHD is 6 bucks for every 1000 invested. I think I did that wrong. Boy, am I bad at math. Somebody let, let us know. But either way, the point, the point of what I wanted to show you is not how bad I am at math. No, dear Devin and investing viewer, it's this. The holdings break down. So when we make this bigger, like that, these are this is a market cap weighted. So the bigger the market cap, the more money that will go into them. So you can look at it as the top 10 holdings, right? I gotta take a breath. I get all worked up. For every for every $100 that goes into the SPY, $6.94 will go into Apple. $6.45 will go into, please go away. Come on, go away. Thank you. Highlighter, six forty-five goes into Microsoft. Three dollars seventeen cents into Amazon. Two dollars ninety-four cents into Nvidia, and you can see you can do the math. So, out of every one hundred dollars that goes into SPY, thirty dollars forty-one cents go into these top ten stocks, and there's five hundred and four holdings. So, the flip side is though, when it comes the other direction when money starts coming out and the S&P gets sold off. These are the ones that are going to drop rather quickly with Apple and Microsoft being the ones that will be hit the hardest. So that's always something to keep in mind. But if it was an equal cap weighted, so if somebody wants to show us, we can look at that. But 
it would just be equal for all 504. So every dollar, whatever it would be, you know, 504 divided by, I'm sorry, $100, whatever that per percentage is that goes into all of them equally across the board. So I don't know. Does that make sense? Did you guys learn a little bit of something if you didn't know that already? Did I explain that right? Give us your feedback. Feel free to fill in a comment card as you as you exit the building. But so yes. Uh, NEP drop hard. Yeah, they're still dropping hard too. I know we've I don't know enough about them. I would have to look. I think oh no, NEE I was looking at. NEP, I had started a position like winter of 22 early winter so it was like february march or so and i had started a couple shares and then i just realized that i didn't understand it when i put it in the too hard pile and i sold it. it looks good i'm sure i put that money into you know something that's down but uh yeah ivy oh by the way you have the best name of all the <laughs> all the viewers that's that's my daughter's name so Second best name. It's tied. Josie's the other one. Billy loaded up on O and SCHD, added to T Row, Stanley Black and Decker, and Starbucks. It's almost like a confuse the guy with the ticker symbol here. See how fast he can get them. How many ticker symbols do you know off the top of your head? Loaded up on O and SCHD. I like it, man. I did the same. I bought some. Oh, I didn't say loaded up. Six shares of O and one share of SCHD. But that's because I'm tapped out in the Roth. Can't put any more money into the Roth until January 1st. So right now, I either have to sell something in the Roth or just wait for dividends to pile up and then I can buy more. So that's kind of the bad part of that. Norlis Nickel is paying a 12% dividend. I'll bet you that wasn't sustainable. It's probably a variable dividend if I would have to guess. Uh, what do we got? Yeah, gold ETF. No, you don't. Dude, I'd like to know. GLDM. That sounds like it's a gold miner ETF, is it? I'm going to go ahead and guess that it is. Hey, does anybody know if Tay Tay's in the building over there at uh, <laughs> the Jets game? Has anybody got the game on? The Gold Shares Mini Trust. I don't really have much information about it. I don't even see a dividend. It doesn't look like it pays a dividend at all. So. Yeah, it tracks the performance of the price of gold bullion. So there you go. If you don't want to store gold in your house, then maybe you buy that. Interestingly, Tay Tay. Dude, she's been moving. Travis Kelsey jerseys like a mofo. Can you imagine what, <laughs> what that would do for my channel if, if I could get Tay Tay to just, I don't know. That's her name, right? Tay Tay? Am I thinking of something else? <laughs> if I could get her to just wear a Dapper Dividends shirt. For 30 seconds. It would be crazy if I could get a million subscribers immediately. Nah, I don't know. Wait a minute. Rob's more for the older folks. Oh, people within 10 years of retirement or in retirement. Yeah, I guess. But still, like gold isn't producing anything. It's just going to keep pace with inflation. So it's not a bad investment. <laughs> yes, uh, J Jason, correct, right? If I remember right. I had a feeling. I know you have your channel. You own a bunch. So uh, do you do that cherry picking? I used to do cherry picking where it was like hunting. Uh, I would get a box of coins and just go through them and look for something that wasn't supposed to be in there. Yeah, you, Bill, you, myself, and Warren had owned Bear Gold for a bit, but I suspect that it was one of the lieutenants from Berkshire that had bought Barrick for that little bit. You know, Warren doesn't do all the buying and selling. He doesn't approve everything. So could have been uh, Todd Combs or Ted Wexler that did that, one of his lieutenants. You know, so I have a feeling it wasn't wasn't Warren because of how vocal he's also been. That's that's also what reading his writings got me to think about. Like, oh, yeah, like, would you rather have, you know, farmland or gold? Could you imagine owning gold for 100 years or asset producing income generating farmland farmland it's got to be the farmland you know oh jim oh don't tell me me don't tell me you're making your wife watch this too if you are i'll drink to that but man you shouldn't be making your wives watch this 
<laughs> Dude, that sounds like a shirt. Knives never run out of ammo. Newmont Mining, right, as your gold play. Very nice. No gold for Guy. Guy, I haven't seen you around in a while. Looking good, Guy. Thanks for stopping by. What metrics do I look at besides P.E. ratio? Well, we don't have all the time in the world, but uh, P.E., I'll, you know, P.E. can be manipulated because of share buybacks and even not, not debt. So if a company is buying back shares, they can use debt to buy back shares, I suppose, right? If a company is buying back shares, then there are less earnings to spread. No, there, there's less shares to have the earnings spread out across. So the less shares there are, earnings can be flat, and it will look like earnings per share have increased. So that's uh, why earnings can be distorted by PE. So I love free cash flow. I love looking at free cash flow metrics. I will always look at the free cash flow payout ratio, you know, price to free cash flow. Free cash flow is so much more harder to manipulate and it's more insulated from, dude, I almost sounded English, there, insulated from the uh, managerial financial shenanigans that they can do so. Uh, yeah, if you don't hold it or, yeah, I sold it. I sold it, man. Nice. <laughs> Steve's wife likes to invest in gold jewelry. Yeah, it's, you know, as long as people are going to want gold. Uh, you can always say the same thing about a business, right? So it's always a risk. But that's why I think if we just reduce it to the S&P 500 versus gold, because it's infinitely more risky to invest in a single business, right? Even Warren Buffett bought Dexter Shoes in the 90s which I remember reading that him and Charlie said, this is one of the most phenomenal businesses we can have. They, I don't remember what it, does anyone remember? Was it like 25,000 shares or so of Berkshire stock they used to buy it? And it, oh my God, that turned into like 12 or $13 billion as of right now. So just one of his biggest mistakes. So even the great Warren Buffett can be wrong on an individual business. So, uh, look at the S&P. That's what I would say versus that. How soon after the ex-dividend date? Immediately that day. So from the way I understand it, if the ex-dividend is on, we'll just say tomorrow morning, Monday the 3rd of October, as soon as the market opens, then you are locked in for that dividend. But the stock is going to drop by the dividend payment because on the X dividend date. So yeah, technically you can sell it that morning. As soon as the market opens on the X dividend date, you can sell it because you will have been recorded. So that's, if anybody knows if that's incorrect, let me know. But to my understanding, that is what it is. Don't know why I'm talking like this all of a sudden, but I'm in the buying guns camp. Yeah, uh, I had a feeling you would, Jim. And God, I can't stop doing it. Okay, back to life, back to reality. No physical gold, but bought it quite a while back. Nobody got, uh, yeah, Leonard Skinner, you got it. Um, nobody got Dr. Doom. I said, who's Dr. Doom? He convinced me to buy gold. Somebody's got to know that. I got to get, I'm getting caught up. Leonard Skinner, right? That's who that smell. Gold's, <laughs> hey, you know what? Not, not a bad strategy, but from what I saw, when one goes down, they all kind of go down. Go down. They're all pretty correlated. Not exact, obviously, but pretty close. VOO is 0.03. Oh, so we were looking about bring up SPY. It's, it's the benchmark. It's the one everyone talks about. Everyone talks about SPY. So you're right. Uh, VOO is the equivalent. Vanguard always is going to be cheaper. So, But you're right. Uh, S&P Global, I think, runs SPY, right? Which is a dividend-paying stock. SPGI, I think, is that ticker symbol. Ah, oh, look at this, dude. We're going to have a party when you get to 100 shares of Visa. Nice, at 90. 
and then also bought oh but yeah i'll save that thought i was gonna say something about pepsico i'll tease it bought more i don't know are okay nike and shd nice be still what's going on a lot of different investors get involved in lots of complicated fancy tricky etc investments yeah it's it's hard to ignore a lot of the big bloops but you know a lot of companies have gone away i think i remember reading that i think over the life of the s p 500 four percent of the stocks are responsible for its growth so uh if you want to get those you got to be right on in, in getting those but who's at the game oh tay tay's at the game you see this is why i need to get caught up tay tay's at the game I can sleep well tonight in this budding romance. You know, next week we'll just do all about Travis Kelsey. Kelsey? Travis Kelsey. It's his evil twin. Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift, you know, warms the cockles of my heart to see them. Uh, good on them. They're both 33 years young. Neither has any children. And now we're talking. Dude, Tay Tay has infiltrated this live stream somehow. This, she is so huge. Even the Dapper Dividends live stream cannot escape the gravitational pull of Tay Tay. That's how big and bright her star is. We're just getting her stuck in. It's Tay Tay's world. We're just all living in it, you know? Enough about Tay Tay. I didn't read your comment, John. Sorry. I uh, like to drop gold in a Canadian miner once its price comes back up. What do I think about Barrick Gold? I don't remember much about it, man. I know I sold it because the dividend growth was really, really slow. You know what, man? Since you're so nice to ask and we're still on that Tay-Tay high, let's look at gold really quick, everybody. <laughs> this is the different Tay-Tay pocket. All right. Uh, do, 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 gold. Come on. What You know, nobody's told me what it is with my computer here my laptop but when i leave this up for a while see how long that took there we go barrett gold zero <laughs> yucky this is one of the reasons why i sold i wanted to have gold exposure but yeah that look at that cut Ugh. Ugh. from 2012 to 2016 i don't remember if they have a variable dividend so i will plead ignorance on that but the dividend's been frozen since 2022. Slow growth, just 3% 20-year cat. This is why I sold it. It's coming back to me now. They, they did have a special dividend, but 2.75% yield. It's not growing. Oh, my God. They're down to 14 But I think when I was buying them, they were in the low, low to mid-20s. Yikes. Either way. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Free cash flow payout ratio last 12 months was only 3,351%. Yucky. Let me just see if they're diluting. Shares outstanding. They did a, a bit of dilution there. So, yeah, down. Ugh. That's why they were cutting the dividend. Or not, not a fan of it. That's why I ended up selling it. Um, you know. Oh, no. What did I do? What happened? Where am I? It's one of those nights, everybody. Tell me something fun. Let's end the last 10 minutes here. You can ask something investing related, but what's something that if you listen to Compound and Friends, I'm blatantly going to rip this off from them. When they're done with their guests, they always ask, say, at the end of the show, what's something non-investing that you're watching, listening to, reading, something like that. Uh, my wife and I are finishing up the fourth season of Sex Education. Education, we got a few to go on that. I'm long sex education. I like that show. Uh, I'm long Kelsey and Tay Tay's relationship. Definitely bullish on that. Let's see what can go, what goes on there. Maybe they'll be the new power couple to replace, I don't know, Beyonce and Jay Z. I'm going to get caught up so we can talk in real time here. Thanks for sharing what you're buying, WPM. And what's WPM? I don't know that. Ah, thank you. Rockwell Automation. There we go. Look at I start talking about Tay Tay's gravitational pull. The black hole that she <laughs> starts burning so bright. 
we can't get help, but we can't help but get sucked into it. But what a nice place to be. It's very warm in Tay Tay's. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to get flagged for sure. Not for Christ's sake. Bought more Petro, Pre, Petro Bronze. Very nice, Matt. What, is that one of your big holdings? You know, what do they say about that? Petrobras is Brazilian stock. I think the Brazilian government has a majority stake in Petrobras, but they say when you invest in foreign companies away from your homeland, you're trading like your known risk for the unknown risk of the foreign lands or something like that. Maybe I just said it. I don't know. It says uh, Rockford's overvalued 10%. Could be, you know, like we said, over valuations completely subjective all a guess yeah that, and that's a good point like i said it's just it's something that turns me off a little bit about it and i know a lot of uh, a lot of people like to invest in it oh my god john what is that i can't even i'm not going to read all that you guys can read it i'll take a sip Somebody share. What do you want? What's a show you're watching? Come on. We got about eight, nine minutes left. Let's have a little fun here before we start the week. Not a lot going on. Not a lot of earnings. We got the T-Mobile dividend that was announced. I didn't really see any more. Uh, make sure you go to dapperdividends.com. Sign up for the newsletter. You know, I'm enjoying it. Uh, it's growing. You know, I've moved over to ConvertKit. I am not buying gold. So, Michael Anthony, you're a little bit late. I sold gold at the beginning. I gave some of my personal reasons why I decided to move on from like 98% of the precious metals we had. And one of the things I did keep is the silver denarius from the year 100 BC. I think that's freaking cool. I paid like 70 bucks for it. I had to do research because I bought from a reputable supplier over in England, but it turns out that a lot of people back in ancient times, they hid their, they would bury their coins because, you know, you had Roman roving hordes, you had marauders, you had robbers. So people would bury in like vases. They would put their money in vases, bury it somewhere. Then they probably died, kicked the bucket, never told anyone where they buried it. And then you get a road crew in Spain or England and they come upon like this massive hoard. And what I found out what happens is that that will all go to like the National Museum or to some figurehead like that. But because there's so many of these, they will go through and look for the extremely rare pieces. And then the rest just gets auctioned off to like dealers and then they sell it to people like me. So it sounds really rare. Some of the pieces are, but you can get like copper pieces from the Roman Empire for five, six bucks, really inexpensive. And it's kind of cool to have a piece of history. So I like that one. Oh no, Benner, you started Mega Man with the flying V, started a position in the arc. Hey, Kathy Wood sounded crazy. And sometimes when you're too early to something, you sound crazy. Crazy. I don't, I think she's predicting Tesla, what like, Stupid six, seven, eight thousand. I don't even know what I know. Caleb Hammer, uh, good point. Thank you for reminding me. My buddy Harris uh, Elliott told me that Graham Stephan actually interviewed Caleb Hammer, so I need to check that out. Um, Bender, I, I don't know if that's a joke. One piece on Netflix, I'm gonna write this down because hey, I you know. We got to have all our times to, uh, you know, South Park. Oh, dude, how is the world of South Park? That thing started when I was in the Navy. It's insane. It's crazy. For Halloween, wear your welder's mask. Dude, I could do it. It, it would be boring. You wouldn't hear nothing. I mean, I could, you know. I could be a welder for Halloween. But, you know. Do you know what? I'm glad I don't weld every day. Here's a dirty little secret for all of you that are watching. Lincoln Electric, right? That's a dividend paying stock. I just thought of, I'd throw it out there. It's ticker LECO, I believe. But I do most of, almost all the welding for our shop, but I don't want to weld every day because 
it's not good to breathe that in all the time. So I've, if the, the, uh, the smoke is ever coming by me, I hold my breath. It's this little trick, but one piece, what is one piece? I don't even know. Oh no. Senior bachelor this fall. It's at eight. The targeted demographics goes to bed at seven. Jim, well, it's past your bedtime then buddy. Gold is like a house. It will go up over the years and go down depending on the economy. Won't need repairs or maintenance like ours, except you can't live in gold. But you can pet it. You can pet it. Uh, it did Warren say that? Yeah. I don't know. He, he says something like that. Again, the gold. If it only, you know, expelled little bits of gold dust. If it was so cute and it farted out little bits of gold dust that we could collect, that would be awesome. But again, like I shared the only thing, if you have an ounce of gold a million years from now, pending that the sun hasn't turned into a red giant and incinerated and obliterated everything on this planet, it's still going to be an ounce of gold. Boy, that's a dollar way to, I'll drink to that, huh? You know, hey kids, enjoy it because one day the world is just going to be incinerated <laughs> When our star explodes, our star that gives us life, called the sun, everybody, the sun giveth and the sun taketh. That almost sounded religious. And if people have just tuned in, I don't know, there's 52 there now. Like, this guy's insane. What's going on here? But you guys like it. I love you guys. I love that you tuned in. Three people just dropped off. I don't even care. I do care. But I care about you, Jim. And that you, uh, pirates wore gold earrings to pay for their funeral expenses. Yeah, you know, people have taken gold into the ground with them, right? Their fillings. My grandpa had a gold filling. I don't know why. He was very frugal, but he had a gold filling. I don't know. Pfizer looks like it could bounce Friday. I hope you meant Friday and not Fry Say. I don't know what Fry Say is. That sounds like. McDonald's would give out free fries on Fry Say or something like that, you know? One Piece, oh no, Japanese manga. Dude, it was a Saturday morning cartoon when I was in the Navy, 90s and 2000s. Uh, manga's the one thing I just do not get. I don't get it at all, and I'm so sorry if that offends any of you, but for me, I, I don't, I have no clue. It doesn't, I don't get it. Now you're talking about the pasty Friday. Michael, now we went from free fries day, from fries day, fries say, to pasty Friday. Oh, my God. This is fun. Do you know what? I've talked with Ryan once about, you know, he hasn't done it yet because him and I, we text all the time. But uh, I've told him, we've talked about, not really doing a topic or something just super quick in the beginning. And I've told him like, I should just do it. Just no topic. Just, we'll just hang out, talk about whatever, whatever you guys want. So who wants the last word? Who wants the last word to say whatever you want to say? Cause it's that time people. It's that time to skedaddle. Let me know if you have future topic references. Do you get the newsletter? Do you, I don't know. Do you use your wife, shave your back? What do you want? <laughs> Michael, we love you. I love you. I, re I really appreciate you. I have fun. I look forward to this. And um, for those of you that just tuned in, I'm so sorry, but it's time to go again. This is like the fastest hour ever. And, oh, yeah, there you go. So Bender. I love that. I love Mega Man. I never played it too much, but I love Mega Man there. This is a, um, this is marked up. This is a Kirkland, shout out Costco, Kirkland brand whiskey aged four years. Pretty good. It's like they sell it by the gallon or so. And that's my Sunday night treat. Busy day today. I did a podcast today. I talked with uh, Ryan and Harris. We're cooking up this little thing where we, we may do like a, I don't know, like a little, I don't want to call it mastermind group, but I don't know. That's in the works. Talked with them, had a meeting, uh, did the newsletter, and, you know, threw this content together for you people and cut my grass. So it's been a fun day. And, um, yeah, I love you guys. 
let me know in the comments below what you think, What whatever. I don't know. It's it's time to go. Enjoy your f rest of your I, – here, I, I will end it with this. Next Star Media, 97 shares. I'm going to buy one more this week. I may just go to all 100, and we'll see what's going with that. But that's probably going to be the one thing on my docket to buy this week is Next Star Media. And, you know, hey – that's what we do. We're landing the plane. Can you hear that? The wheels are down. Wait, is that the wheels down or is that the no more Tay Tay jokes? It's just fun to say. So Bender, I got to hide your comment there, but I love all you people. Dude, thank you for swinging on by and spending a little bit of your Sunday night with me one more time. I was a kid from the eighties. We go out with Pee Wee. Why? Because I loved it as a kid. So for all of you, I thank you for sticking around to the end of the show. I will see you next week right here. And bless you all. Have fun this week. And let me know what you bought next week. So, so long, everybody.